I, I'm so delighted to be here today to speak in strong support of the private member's bill from my colleague from North Island, Powell River, which the effect of which was, would, to be, be, would be to make the right to housing part of the Canadian law through the Bill of Rights. And I just want to say at the outset, her passion for this topic came through loud and clear during her remarks. And it's so easy to get lost in the statistics over this the housing crisis that Canadians face, but she put faces behind those statistics so we all understand just what a crisis we're dealing with in this country. Because, Mr. Speaker, it is our belief that all Canadians have the right to housing as a place of refuge, a sense of security for themselves and their families. So we ask that the Bill of Rights be amended to include the internationally recognized right to housing, uh, which should be at the heart of any national housing strategy that the government is anticipating. Now, we've heard about this strategy, and we hope fervently on this side of the House that it is not simply platitudes, like a piled upon platitudes, but that we see real action in the short term. Because in their 2017 budget, the Liberals promised over $11 billion, but over 11 years, 90% of that funding allocated after the next election, should they be re-elected. So, Mr. Speaker, I live in a community with a housing crisis, with an emergency. So words don't do enough. Money doesn't seem to be anywhere to be found in my community, and we have to get serious about this issue. I have very little time, so let me start with the specifics of Victoria, British Columbia. Every day we have people come in into our constituency office concerned about this crisis. It's ranked our city among the most expensive places to buy housing in Canada. If you live in Victoria, the high cost of purchasing a home remains a, a, a barrier to so many people. The reality for those looking for an affordable place to rent as well is that the problem is daunting. So in addition to the homelessness crisis in our community, when many of our working poor are barely able to make ends meet. That's confirmed by a recent research study conducted by the United Way. Renter households face far greater housing affordability challenges and hardships. They have lower incomes and they pay a larger proportion of their income on housing than homeowners do. Victoria has one of the lowest vacancy rates for rental properties across this country. The CMHC listed the vacancy rate for rentals in Victoria at a shocking 0.6% last fall. Now, how, how people can afford housing, how people can afford rents is a, is a serious mystery to many of us. Uh, it's simply a, an affordability challenge. Paired with the extremely low vacancy rate I spoke of, securing suitable accommodations is virtually impossible for so many people in our community. Even if you can find a place to rent, the rents are so high and the job often people working at minimum wages are simply unable to afford a place to live, should they even be able to find it. So, to better understand the situation, Mr. Speaker, consider the CMHC and its discussion of what it terms core housing needs. That's the expression. When uh, it budgets and spends more than 30% of its income on housing, a family is said to have a core housing need. So as, as the cost of rent remains high, far too many Victorias find themselves in core housing need. Mr. Speaker, of Victoria's renters, almost half spent more than 30% of their income on shelter in 2011, and a quarter spent more than 50% of their income on housing. Our constituency office, as I said, is deluged with people struggling with this reality. My office is currently working with Beth, for example, one of many seniors who can no longer afford her rent after she separated from her partner. We work with young families who have no contingency money left after each month, given how much they pay for housing. They, found, they find themselves in dire financial straits when having to cover, for example, an unforeseen emergency, a dental appointment for the child, the sudden cost of vehicle maintenance, or even a child needing new shoes puts people in a state of housing crisis. We feel the stress of our constituents on a daily basis. And of course, this also has a disproportionate impact on our Indigenous population. 
According to our local newspaper, The Times Colonist, earlier this year, quote, Indigenous people in Victoria make up 20% of shelter users experiencing chronic homelessness, despite making up just 4.1% of the population, close quote. Across Canada, almost one in two senior-led households that fa face rent affordability challenges and affordable housing options for seniors are, of course, very, very limited. Senior women who live alone are much more likely to live in poverty than senior men, and that we find very much a fact of life in our community as well. And it's having an enormous impact, the housing crisis, on our business sector, of course, because people can't afford to live where the jobs are. And that's what we hear every day from the Chamber of Commerce and other local business groups struggling to attract and retain talented people, because prospective employees simply can't afford to find affordable, suitable places to live in the Victoria uh, office. And so without adequate staff, business owners are afraid uh, uh, about people uh, of losing their livelihoods. This past spring, CTV did a story about students in Victoria who, f faced with the exorbitant cost of accommodations, have actually had to drop out of university, and some live in their vehicles in order to try to stay at university. So I'm trying to say, Mr. Speaker, that the housing crisis affects people from young to old, Indigenous, non-Indigenous, people who rent, people who are living on fixed wage, often a minimum wage, and even people, young families, who are trying to find a, a foot into the housing market themselves to purchase. It's simply become unaffordable. And, Mr. Speaker, this is shocking in a country like Canada. I haven't spoken adequately in the time available about those living in homelessness, but we have an estimated 1,500 homeless people living in the greater Victoria area today, according to the City of Victoria's recent statistics. These circumstances are simply unacceptable in a country as wealthy as ours. Mr. Speaker, as, as Canadians hear about the housing hardship in my riding and elsewhere in Canada, does it sound like the federal government is ensuring their right uh, to adequate housing? I don't think so. These seniors I spoke of, the young families, local business owners, Indigenous people, students, and the homeless are in crisis now. They cannot wait for the Liberals to finally do something serious and immediate about this crisis. They must have the government live up to its obligations. This bill would allow that to occur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hello.